In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the next term in a series of numbers. So let's say if we have the numbers 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. What is the next number in the sequence? Now what we need to do is we need to look for a pattern. What pattern do you see in each of these numbers? Notice that each number has a common difference of 3. To go from 2 to 5, you need to add 3. Likewise, to go from 5 to 8, you need to add 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. And 8 plus 3 is 11. Whenever you have a sequence that differs by a common number, this is an arithmetic sequence. If you can add or subtract by the same number, you have an arithmetic sequence. So 14 plus 3 will give us the next number, 17. 17 plus 3 will give us the next number, 20. So anytime you have a sequence that differs by repeated addition or uh, subtraction, it's an arithmetic sequence. Now let's work on another example. Let's say if we have these numbers, 5, 9, 13, 17. What's the next number in the sequence? Find the next three numbers actually. Feel free to pause the video. So notice that 5 differs from 9 by 4 units. If we add 4 to 5, it will give us 9. And if we add 4 to 9, it will give us 13. So therefore, the common difference is 4. So to find the next number in the sequence, we need to add 4 to 17. 17 plus 4 is 21. 21 plus 4 is 25. And 25 plus 4 is 29. Here's a different example. 27, 21, 15, and then 9. Find the next three terms in the sequence. So what is the common difference? If we take the second number and subtract it by the first number, we're going to get negative 6. If we take the third number and subtract it by the second number, it will give us the same number, negative 6. So therefore, the common difference is negative 6. So if you add negative 6 to 27, you're going to get 21. And if you add another negative 6 to 21, it will give you 15. Or if you subtract 21 by 6, you get 15. 15 minus 6 is 9. 9 minus 6 will give us the next number 3. And then 3 minus 6 will give us negative 3. And then negative 3 minus 6 will give us the last number, negative 9. So the common difference is negative since Once you have that, then you could find the next term in the sequence. So once again, this is another arithmetic sequence or arithmetic sequence. Here's a different problem to try. Let's say if we have the sequence 3, 6, 12, and 24. What is the next number in the sequence? So first, let's see if there's a common difference. If we take the second term and subtract it by the first term, it will give us a difference of 3. And if we take the third term and subtract it by the second, we're going to get a difference of 6. And so that's not going to help us much. But let's divide the second term by the first term. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And if we take the third term divided by the second, we will get 2. So therefore, this sequence has a common ratio of 2. Notice that to get from 3 to 6, or to go from 3 to 6, we need to multiply by 2. 3 times 2 is 6. And if we multiply 6 by 2, that will give us 12. And then if we multiply 12 by 2, it will give us 24. So this is what's known as a geometric sequence, because the numbers, they differ by multiplication or division, as opposed to addition and subtraction. So if, to find the next number in the sequence, we got to multiply 24 by 2, which will give us 48. And then if we want to find the next one, it's going to be 48 times 2, which is 96, and so forth. Here's another similar example. Let's say if we have the numbers 4, 12, 36, 
what is the next number in a sequence? So let's see if it's an arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence. Let's see if there's a common difference. If we take the second term and subtract it by the first, we'll get 8. And if we take the third and subtract it by the second, this will give us 24. So therefore, we don't have an arithmetic sequence. Let's test to see if it's a geometric sequence. 12 divided by 4 will give us 3. And 36 divided by 12 is 3. So we have a common ratio. If we multiply 4 by 3, it will give us 12. And if we multiply 12 by 3, that will give us 36. So to find the next number, we've got to multiply 36 by 3. And that's going to give us 108. And if we want to find the next two numbers, we need to continue to multiply by 3. 108 times 3 is 324. And 324 times 3 is 972. And so that's it for this example. Go ahead and find the missing numbers in the sequence. So feel free to pause the video to find the answer. If we look at the first example, 1 squared is the same as 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared or 4 times 4, that's 16. So the next number has to be 5 squared, which is 25. And then it's 6 squared, which is 36, and 7 squared, which is 49. So look out for exponents because sometimes you might have that as a pattern. Try this one. 8, 27, 64. And then go ahead and find the missing numbers. Now, 8 is the same as 2 to the third. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 27 is 3 to the third. 4 to the third, or 4 times 4 times 4, that's 64. Therefore, the next number in the sequence has to be 5 to the third which is 125. And then we have 6 cubed, which is 216. And the next one will be 7 to the third, and then so forth. Find the pattern. Consider the sequence 4, 6, 9, 13, and 18. So go ahead and find the next numbers. Well, we're not dealing with exponents here. Because 6, 13, and 18, those are not perfect squares or perfect cubes. So let's see if there's a common difference or a common ratio. Now, if we subtract 6 by 4, that will give us 2. And if we divide 6 by 4, that's 1.5. If we subtract 9 by 6, that will give us 3. And if we divide 9 by by 6, that's also 1.5. If we take 13 and subtract it by 9, that's 4. And if we take 13 and divide it by 9, it's no longer 1.5. It's actually 1.444. Repeat it. Now, if we take 18 and subtract it by 13, that gives us 5. And if we take 18 and divide it by 13, that's 1.3846. Now, notice that with division, there is no pattern that we can use here. But with subtraction, there is a pattern. Even though we don't have a common difference, the difference is increasing by 1. So, to go from 4 to 6, we need to add 2. And to go from 6 to 9, we need to add 3. To go from 9 to 13, we got to add 4. And to go to 13 to 15, we need to add 5. So therefore, the next number has to be 18 plus 6, which is 24. And then after that, we need to add 7. 24 plus 7 is 31. And then we need to add 8. 31 plus 8 is 39. So based on the pattern that we see here, that's how we could find the next set of numbers.
Here's another example. 7, 9, 13, 19, 27. Using those five numbers, find the next three numbers. So what is the difference between 7 and 9? If we take 9 and subtract it by 7, we're going to get a difference of 2. If we take 13 and subtract it by 9, we're going to get a difference of 4. 19 minus 13 is going to be a difference of 6, and 27 minus 19 is a difference of 8. So therefore, in order to find the next number, we can follow the sequence here. The sequence of addition increases by 2. So next time, we got to add 10. 27 plus 10 is 37. And then we need to add 12. 37 plus 12 is 49. And then we'll add 14. 49 plus 14 is 63. And so that's it. That's how you could find the next three numbers. Sometimes you need to see the pattern in a fraction. So let's say if we have these four fractions, 3 over 4, 5 over 7, 7 over 10, and 9 over 13. So based on this, find the next three fractions. So how do we do this? How would you begin? So take a minute and see if you can figure this out. Now when dealing with fractions, personally, I find it helpful to separate the numerator and the denominator. If we focus on the top numbers, we could see a pattern between 3, 5, 7, and 9. The common difference between those numbers is 2. 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 2 is 9. So therefore, the next three top numbers have to be 11, 13, and 15. Now let's focus on the denominator. 4, 7, 10, 13. Notice that each of those numbers differ by 3. 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13, so 13 plus 3 is 16, and then we have 19, and then 19 plus 3 is 22. And so you want to separate the fractions into the top and the bottom part portion. Just see it separately, and it's, it can help you to figure out the missing terms. Here's another example. 11 over 4, 8 divided by 9, 5 over 16. Based on those three numbers, find the next two numbers in this sequence. So if we focus on the top three numbers, 11, 8, and 5, notice that the common difference is negative 3. If we subtract 11 by 3, it's going to give us 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. So 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So that's going to satisfy the pattern on top. On the bottom, what pattern do you see? 4, 9, 16. They're all perfect squares. 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, 16 is 4 squared. So the next numbers have to be 5 squared and 6 squared. 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. And so the missing numbers are 2 over 25 and negative 1 over 36. So that's it for this video. So now hopefully you understand how to find the next term in a sequence just by looking at the patterns. By the way, for those of you who want to have access to my pre-algebra video playlist, take a look at the description section. I've left a link there. So you can check that out when you get a chance.